Hello everybody, how are we? Welcome along to WD18, the Watford fan channel with Charlie Zazera and myself, Jacob Colshaw. We're back after the international break to talk all things Watford once again. It's been a busy international break for a few of our Hornets, which we'll touch on in just a second. We're going to preview Plymouth, but as you can see by the title, we're going to rank every Watford player's performance so far this season based on what we've seen so far. It's not halfway through the season, Charlie, but I think it's a good time to make a early, maybe put a little early report together. For the first term so far, you were quite keen yeah. to do this, right? Yeah, no, I just yeah, a good spot. We wanted to do something to warm up into the big festive run in. There's going to be games every couple of days, um, and we know what it's like with the transfer window and stuff. It might be tough doing it in January. Um, so yeah, good spot. Looking forward to um, going through it as what well, we've had a good start to the season. So it'll be interesting to see how many we disagree on, and as always, get in the comments and let us know uh, who should be where. Yeah, absolutely. Let us know your thoughts on any of the picks in the comment section below. As always, if you do go on to enjoy the video and the podcast, leave a like, drop us a five-star review on audio. I know a few people are doing that at the moment, so I really, really do appreciate it. It does go a long way. Subscribe to WD18 and follow us on our social channels at WD18Fans. As always, this is brought to you in partnership with Hertfordshire Mind. There has been a few goals so far this season, and the, 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 the money's going up as we speak pretty much every week with Watford. Hopefully that continues on Friday night away at Plymouth, Charlie. A trip to Wayne Rooney's Plymouth. We have played them already this season uh, in the Carabao Cup, which we which we won uh, at Vicarage Road. There was a lot of hype between Cleverley and Rooney meeting up together, Rooney coming to, to Vicarage Road. Um, I guess uh, the, the question would be, what's just sort of your thoughts ahead of Plymouth? Is it I mean, they they had a bit of a rocky opening day against Sheffield Wednesday, but since then Rooney's got a grip of this team and they look they look like a good side. Yeah, I think I watched them against the Luton game where they dismantled them. Um, they've got a player called Sissoko. Uh, mm. I think he plays on the left wing. He looks really exciting player. Um, I think they've got similar to us, really really good home form, but not great away form. So. I think that's the next step for this Watford team. Can we start getting performances on the road? It's a Friday night down in Devon, so all the fans who are going fair play. Um, yeah, can we get a performance? Can we start picking up points? And if we can start picking up points away from home and then keeping our same at home form, who knows? Whisper it quietly. I think the football <laughs> cliche is. Um, do you fancy us come Friday? Because... Obviously, we are playing before the the start of start of the championship weekend. It does mean that we can put a little bit of scoreboard pressure on. I know even at sixteen games in, people are going to say you can't do that, but you, you can because Watford will start the weekend in sixth. If we win, we can go as high as fourth uh, come the start of the Saturday fixtures, which would go above Burnley. If we get a draw, we we go up to to fifth as well. Do you read much into that at this point, Charlie, or am I making a little bit too much of that? Yeah, maybe not league position wise, but I think we've had it a couple of times, especially ahead of the Luton game, which I think was off the back of an international break. And you think we've had a good result. We've got players coming back for full week of training. Um, I think we've got no new injuries from the internationals all coming back, but it's just that away form. It's hard to be confident going into it, but I'm looking forward to the game. Under the lights on a Friday night again, uh, we've done the business against Oxford and it was nice enjoying the weekend after that one. So. Hopefully we can have a positive result ahead of it's another free game week, isn't it? Yeah, exactly that. I just on Plymouth, I know I said they started well. I know people are going to say they're 18th, but the expectation for Plymouth fans from what I've read is is just stay up in the league this season. And that's the job for Wayne Rooney. So when you look at their squad on paper compared to some other teams in the championship, uh, I mean, Derby are another one who have come up and started pretty well. I think they probably would have taken that after a bit of a, a rocky start, as I said. Uh, it is a trip to Devon. Uh, for what for let us know your score predictions in, in the comment section below. Anything you'd tweak, Charlie, lineup wise going into Friday? Um, I'm just trying to think of the injury situation for us. I've just just remembered a certain Mr. Andre Gray could be lining up in green against us. Um, so that should that should be interesting. But yeah, it's written have, by the way, it's written. If you're gonna have a bet, you know what to do. Um I'm not too sure. I think it's. I want to see Bar start again. It's good that he he came off against Oxford. I think we're going to see him being rested up again. He made the goal really, didn't he, for Bayer against Oxford? Um, I don't. We, I'm sure we're going to hear from Tom in the coming days about kind of progress. I think Mr. Sissoko's back. He'll come into that midfield. Um, I imagine. Um, but it'd be interesting to hear from Tom about latest on Tom Daly Bashiru. Ogbonna, if we can get some of those guys back going into the festive period, I'd be a lot more confident. So, yeah, I want to see Bar come in. Sissoko will be playing again. Um, 
and yeah, I think Georgie played for Georgia. I don't think they had the best results, but um, no sign of him getting injured. So hopefully we can have Barr and Georgie in the 10 causing devastation down in Devon. Just on the international break, as Charlie just briefly mentioned there, there were some international awns across the board. Um, probably the most uh, notable with Festier Bessele playing against England at Wembley. Obviously a 5-0 uh, result for England, which was which was fantastic. Ebersele, I know he's a defender. And I know they conceded five. Looked pretty good. I saw a few Watford fans saying that they they liked the look of him. Um, and I remember in their last international break, he, he, he put in a gorgeous cross as well. I think, Charlie, what it reminded me with him is he is an international player and we have got a guy in the Championship who is playing at a really high level um, for his country. Did you did you see the England game uh, the other night? Yeah, he's an international player, but he's an Ireland international, so let's not get ahead of ourselves. Um, hello to Connor. I know he's watching. We've done the video of him on Rocco Vata. Um, he gave me some uh, some kind words after England lost in the Euros final, so it's been good to return the favour <laughs> after these Nation League wins. Um, I love the receipts, by the way, for that. Yeah, of course, of course. Um, yeah, I think ebbasselli has been their best player for like the last three games, and they were really good defensively in the first half against England, but he was their only out ball. He picked the ball up and was running past all of our top class players. So we're going to rank him and say how well he's done this season. I know Rocco Vata scored for the under, Ireland under-21s. Bayo scored his first goal for Ivory Coast. And uh, Adumbia last night, I think, scored his first professional goal and first goal for Mali. So, yeah, good times. I think we've got quite a lot of internationals compared to other championship teams. Even um, the Chilean Pirlo getting called back up for Chile, um, and he's been playing for them. So, um, yeah, it's good to it's good to see. Hopefully, they all come back fit. But it's it's good to see that those lads are getting rewarded for some good performances this season. What a month for Vakin Bayo! That this must be the best month of his career, surely. <laughs> I mean, he's scoring goals for fun for Watford. It was five in three. He then goes gets called up to the Ivory Coast squad, which is I think it was the first time for him as well. Scores. I'd love to love to know if that's the best month of his career in terms of not only the numbers, but actually what he's done in the past month. It's pretty pretty incredible. And I don't think a lot of people would have predicted that, Charlie. Not at all. I'm trying to think of other Ivorian strikers that they've got. I think they've got Sebastian Haller now. I think he's gone to Lecce. But yeah, it's, it's, it's not bad, is it, from uh, Vakim Bayo? Obviously, he scored those four goals, Sheffield Wednesday. Scored against Oxford. But it's going to be interesting where we place him for where we rank him because... So it hasn't been totally uh, swimmingly for for Bayo, but hopefully the crow can um, continue to fly for the rest of the year. And the I think when you, we're doing the rankings as well, because he's finished quite strongly in this period, I reckon the opinion might have just gone up a couple of levels from maybe beforehand, which is something to mention as well. The timing of when we're doing this video. So they're the international Hornets, uh, as we mentioned. We'll, we'll see which ones are involved come Friday night at Plymouth. Uh, I think Watford. Uh, uh, would be, I think they are the favourites just purely based on the league table. But with our away form, Charlie, that still is just the back of my mind that we have to improve it because in terms of home form, we're we're right at the top for away form. We're right at the bottom, and we're 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 sitting sixth in the championship. And it is just a case of that away form just letting us down at this moment in time. Um, we've discussed it so many times in this channel about how we solve it, and I don't think anyone really has the answer. Um, game management is something that I've seen a lot of people talking about, just managing particularly the early phases of games because we have started a little bit slowly. Would you make us favourites for Friday despite that away form? No, <laughs> no, I wouldn't make us. No, I wouldn't make us favourites. I don't, I don't want to get ahead of ourselves. But it's interesting. I listened this morning to the lads at from the Rookery end, and they did a podcast reflecting at the recent at our place. I think it was Tuesday night um, where Clevs was there. Scott Duxbury, um, who else was there? Dan Backman, uh, Nanny was there as well. And it was really insightful. And one thing they spoke about, and I think Dan Backman spoke about it, was the Luton game and saying preparation was great. Um, we kind of, Tom played like an inspirational video and we were all ready for it, but then we lost the fight. And I think that's one thing away from home that we need to improve on. I don't think it's necessarily tactics or personnel or formation i think we just need to win the fight like gain control of possession be brave on the ball win your duels because you know away from home the crowd's going to be against you but i think that's once you can kind of earn the right to play by having that physicality and i'm hoping that's something that 
Sissoko, he should be kind of one of our leaders doing that. So, yeah, I want to see a bit more physicality away from home um, because I do think we've got some big boys, um, especially looking at our aerial stats. So I think, yeah, if we start winning the winning the duels, I think that's going to be a first step to start getting results away from home. Yeah, I totally agree. I also, th I think, just to emphasise that point about the experienced players, Tom Ince spoke to Talk Sport about sort of cleverly sort of taking the chains off the, the younger players in the squads and he's allowed the more experienced players to sort of control the dressing room. Now, Clevs is probably one of those players that did that in his playing career alongside Troy, Ben Foster, the, the, those names go on. But I think the point is, if you're leaning on the experienced players in the dressing room, I also think there's an element that you need to lean on them. Well, he is probably leaning on them, but they need to deliver on the pitch as well in just terms of managing the game. We've got internationals, as we've touched upon, who are playing, you know, Ryan Portis is a Scotland international Ogbonna, I know he's not fit, but the point is, Batman was an Austrian sash. There's players on there who've played in some big, big games. And I just think at times away from home, we just need to manage the game a bit better. And even some of the younger players like Pollock. I mean, Pollock's become a leader of this team at 23, which says a lot about the impact Cleverly's had. And I just think bringing it right rounds, it is just the case. I think we just need to manage the games better uh, and play to the situation a little bit more. When we look at those three games, though, Charlie, look uh, coming up, uh, three games left in November. Plymouth, Bristol City, QPR. Now, I know QPR is always a big one for you, Charlie, but when you look at those three uh, for Watford, what would be a good return? Because it's Plymouth away and then two home games. I think a good return, if we're trying to raise our expectations, would be six points. Lose to Plymouth away and win two home games. We don't do any draws. I think Bristol City are going to be really good. They've been really good on the road and I think they could be a dark horse for playoffs. I think four points would be okay. Six points, good. And then seven and nine would be excellent. Um, yeah, what would you reckon? I think five, I think five's my par. I think if we can if we can get two draws and a win, I think that'd be a good return. If we, as you say, seven to nine, excellent snap your hand off e even six so if you said six points now we'd win two and lose one i'd take that i think below five i'd be slightly four is probably my minimum but i think five is what i'd expect us to get um out the out the two i think that qpr are really struggling on the Sapuentes at the moment plymouth you'd expect us to win i think uh, if i'm honest or elite well not lose uh, Jakey, Jakey. <laughs> you'd expect us to not lose I think like okay maybe not expect us that's probably the wrong word because our way form has been so bad I need to always caveat if it was at home it's a completely different story but I'd say Plymouth we shouldn't be losing Bristol City I agree could go either way but with our home form you'd probably back us to get something and I'd expect us to beat QPR so looking at that five points is probably what I'd expect if we, um, won, if we won on Friday it'd be a, a great start to that wouldn't it it'd set us up yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly that. We'll see how we get on fr on Friday night in Devon against Wayne Rooney's Plymouth. That might be the football cliche of this episode. Uh, Charlie, you just briefly touched on the From the Recreate End pods. People can check it out the Our Place um, event that happens with the club the other the other week. Um, it Has it come out just yet? Yeah, yeah. They I, I listened to it this morning. Uh, John must have been busy last night or early this morning. Um, yeah, really good listen. Um, sounded pretty positive. I think there was at least a couple of hundred Watford fans at Vicarage Road. Um, yeah, we'll put the link in the description. Well, it, it wasn't kind of filled with it, exclusive, but um, just loads of little interesting nuggets um, talking about kind of where's Hoots exit and um, what Nanny's like as a character. And I, I kind of mentioned what Batman said about Luton and um, what, what Tom's been saying. So, yeah, uh, give that, definitely give that a listen and, Look, I think the club have to do it as kind of EFL regulations. But, um, yeah, it's good that they're doing that and we're getting more insight. So, um, yeah, make sure you give that a listen. We'll leave a link in the description. Absolutely. Make sure to go and check out the lads from the Rookery End. Absolute legends. Professional as ever getting that out. Uh, just before we touch on what for players so far this season, doing our tier list, I know that's going to be an interesting one for people to listen to. So we'll explain it as best as possible and describe what's going on. Uh, the Mad Squirrel do have some new offers coming, friends of the channel, Mad Squirrel. So make sure you keep your eyes peeled on our social channels at WD18 Fans and Mad Squirrel Watford for the latest there. We'll hopefully be back for a post match pint at some point very, very soon uh, to QPR. do it. 
QPR, that's the one. QPR will be there for that one. So if you fancy coming along, having a pint with us, uh, getting get talking a little bit of Watford. There were so many people last time when we recorded just saying hello, which was lovely. So hopefully we can see you down there. New offers are on the way. And that leads us on nicely, Charlie, to Watford players so far this season, the tier list. So here we go. This is the, the tier list for people who can't see. We've got five categories from bottom to top. Players that we want to see more from. Players that have been a bit meh. Players that have been decent, players that have been quality, and then player of the season so far. Now, Charlie, I think the first thing to say is for the player of the season, we are only picking one player, right? For that one, we can't pick multiple. Yeah. I reckon if we put all of them in quality and then at the end we can decide who player of the season is so far. And it'd be interesting to see if they manage to keep up that form and win it at the end of the season. Yeah, exactly. So the players that have been listed on here go from someone like Kai Kai, who hasn't played a first team minute yet. So I think we know where he's going all the way up to Georgie Chatfordatsi. So no one in, I think he's in the under 23s, but it's first team players who are in and around the, the 25 man squad, um, 23 man squad uh, for Watford. So play along with us. Let us know in the comment section, any that you disagree, agree with. Uh, and yeah, comment down below your thoughts as well. Charlie, I'll, I'll do the honour. I think we'll do one each, shall we, just to make sure we keep it moving. Uh, and if we disagree with any, then jump in. Um, oh, I'll jump in as well if I disagree, disagree with any. I'll let you I'll let you kick off and do the first one. Um, you're going to give yourself a hard one or an easy one? Um, let's go. Let's go from the back. Shall we go Dan Backman, shall we? Um, yeah. I'll personally go Dan Backman for Mayor. Um, I think I'm still scarred a bit from that Leeds game. Um, I think when I looked at the stats, he has got the most errors leading uh, to shots in the championship so far this season. Um, we saw him take a bit of a bit of a time out out the side of an injury. He has made some saves. We know his strengths. We know his weaknesses. I think his save percentage is higher than Jonathan Bond. Um, but then, yeah, I looked at his past completion and that's one thing that really kills me. Um, and I think he's 26th in the championship for the lowest kind of past completion. So, yeah, I think Dan, we, we know what Dan's been about. He got a clean sheet uh, last time out at Oxford. So hopefully he can kick on now. Another clean sheet would be nice um, on Friday night. But yeah, meh for me. Do you agree? Or any lower or higher? I think again, it's bad, but I'm still scarred by Luton and I'm still scarred by Leeds with that Dan Batman. What I will say in his defence is he's made some big saves this season that I think went under the radar because it is Batman and because he's quite a divisive figure. And I feel like, unfortunately with Dan, he's at that point in his Watford career where people will remember the mistakes more than they do the good moments with him. Uh, I'm probably guilty of it as well, which is 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 difficult. And it's probably where the bias slightly comes in and I think where, and I think we'd said it at the time, the way Cleverly managed the Bond Batman situation wasn't great. And it just felt like it put a lot of pressure on Dan for that Luton game. Having said that, as I say, he he has made some good saves. But I think with those two games in particular, it's hard to put him above where we've placed him in the meh section. I don't think there's any arguments, though, about the man I'm going to pick. And I know this is an easy one, but Massey Pollock, I mentioned at the top of the show. I mean, there's definitely a shout to say he's player of the season so far. He's played in every single championship game for Watford, from Millwall on the opening day all the way up to Oxford at home in our last game as well. And then when you include the Carabao Cup in that, he's been magnificent, Matty Pollock, someone who I think everyone knows how, how good he's been, just a man mountain, winning everything in the air, really grown as a leader, grown as a player. I think he's pretty much nailed on. He's going to be the next captain for Watford, I think. And also, he's been rewarded with a new contract. And I think that says everything you need to know about how well he's played. So, Pollock, for me, absolutely goes into quality. And I'm sure we'll have a debate about whether he's the player of the season. Um, alongside some other than, some other names here, Charlie. I mean, there's a few shouts, I think, actually, early, early doors. But there's obviously an obvious one, which, which, we'll, which we'll touch upon. But who do we want to go with next? On Because I'm assuming Pollock's, Pollock's a no-brainer. Yeah, of course. Shall we go with uh, Matty's mate... Uh... Jimbo, James Morris, could be um, not divisive, but some people don't rate him, some people do. I, I'd put Morris in decent. I think whenever he's played, he's been solid, 7 out of 10. He's been playing in that new role, left side of a back three. I think his passing has been really, really good. And we, I think we've done it on the last video 
him starting off Georgie's attack from that kind of left side of the pitch where Georgie likes to start. Um, yeah, I think for me, like, obviously we haven't really seen when Og Bonner's been a fully fit back line who would start, but I think I'd have him starting, you know, and I think not many people would say that. Um, you could always trust him, always give gives his all, so I'd put him in decent, Morris. Yeah, I, I hear that. I think probably you can't put him in the quality conversation because of he... he He's been in and out of the team a little bit. I know at the start of the season, he's playing every single game. Then he dropped out a little bit. But what I will say, I think he's been quality in the context of it's not his natural position. He's playing the left of a back three. He's not the tallest of guys. Physically, he's not the best, but he's got a really good football brain, I think, Morris. And he uses his ability really, really well. So I think decent is a fair reflection. I always think passing-wise, he's probably one of the best in the back line in terms of those balls that go into midfield. Um, do you know what? I'm going to do everyone a favour here because I know they're looking at this, probably thinking there's names on here that you're not going to spend time talking about them, are you? Mm -hmm. But what I'll do is Kai Kai want to see more. Kevin Caben want to see more. Uh, Tikvich want to see more. Do you? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we got it. We'll give the lad a chance. Um, I, I, do you know what? Is it controversial to even put Rocco Vatter in that? Now, what I mean by that is, ability-wise, so exciting. But I want to see more of Vatter. And I wouldn't put him in meh. I wouldn't put him in decent. Every time I've seen him, I put him in quality. But I, I feel uncomfortable putting him in the same as Matty Pollock, who's played every game. So, Charlie, that's quite a divisive one to start with. Where do we put him on, on this list? Yeah, I think the context of want to see more probably differs for Rocco Vatter because we literally, yeah. um, not we want to see more about how he's performing. We just want to see more of him because I think I would actually put him in, in decent. I think whenever he's played, he's always made an impact. Um, when I was looking at bar stats, um, which one was it? Um, highest goal creating actions per 90 to try to drill down how they how effective they've been on the pitch um, and bars right up there. But Rocco Vatter as well, um, he, he's on there. He's second for Watford. So he's created 0.6 um, goal creating action per game. So he looks so exciting. I think he's going to be the next one to break through. I think potentially if we lose someone like Georgie, he's going to be one of the stars to break through. Um, he's so exciting when he's playing, so direct. His energy off the ball is excellent. I think it's only a matter of time before he, uh, what did the kids say, explode. I think he's going to be a brilliant player for us. <laughs> the Gen Z plus. <laughs> uh, Rocco Vatter goes into decent. A couple of other names I missed out. I think Dumbia wants to see more uh, as well. I put, do you know what, Duomo, another one. I put him in the Vatter category of, you know, obviously came made his full debut against Sheffield Wednesday. Uh, came off the bench against Oxford. I thought he was. I thought he was really good at Sheffield Wednesday. Uh, especially what I forget about Duomo is he has played a lot of football. Considering he's only twenty, like he's not a standard twenty-year-old who's kind of been in and out of the team. He's played a lot in in Belgium um, as well. So I think I'm going to put him in. That's quite hard as well because I want to see more of him. But it's probably too early to say being decent. So I, yeah, I think, yeah, I think that has been a bit more exciting, and I think he has done more. But I, I don't know. He has been decent in the in the games he's played, and it's all relative. We don't know if he if he would have played every single minute, he would could be our starting player. So maybe maybe we need to be fair and say when he has played, he has been decent because that game shift for Wednesday, wasn't it? He, he came in and everyone was saying how good he was. So maybe not so much against Swansea, but. Yeah, why not? If, if you don't disagree, I think he has been decent when he's played for I us. think I'm maybe misinterpreting want to see more. I think in terms of uh, I'm misinterpreting game time and actual performances. Um, but I think Duomo goes into decent. I'm going to go over. I'll take another one instead then. I'm going to go with... Oh, I, do you know what? I'm going to take my man, Georgie. I think, again, we'll have a conversation about player of the season. But he goes into quality, doesn't he, Charlie? I saw a stat earlier about sort of how far he's carried the ball. Uh, it's, it's basically the top, I think it's like 4,000 metres with the ball. Um, he's created the most chances for Watford. I think it's the most chances in, 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 in the championship, the most progressive passes. 
just I think the Oxford game summed up his his quality. I, I sound like a broken record the amount of times I've said it. I think the only thing I'd probably add on Georgie, can he get more goals to his game? Cleverly said that he could be a top four player in the Premier League if he gets goals to his game. I think Georgie, I mean, look, it's inevitable he's going to leave Watford. I think we can all accept he's going to go. I think the right level of club, though, would be like a Brighton or a club that is going to be in the Europa League. I feel that's his level at, at this moment in time. I don't get me wrong, I don't, I don't see there's any reason at 25 the scope to play Champions League football, but I think Europa League is would, a Europa League club would be his level. Similar club to the way Esprit moved to Girona. That that team is playing, I know they're playing Champions League, but a European football team, maybe a, a big team in the Europa or a small team in the Champions League, that, that sort of level of club. But I think if he can add goals into his game, it's only a matter of time. And I think goals will probably dictate the, the fee we can get for him because if he increases that, it's only going to go up exponentially. And yeah, I think that's probably the biggest thing to say about Georgie. What's the most impressive thing for me though, Charlie? And I remember Henri said this about Eden Hazard and what he loved about him was people underestimate how difficult it is to do sprints in a game. Everyone can do that, but can, to do it so consistently with the ball and how heavy that is on the legs. And Georgie picks up the ball from deep, runs at players and does that constantly. And it's such an asset for Watford. If he, if he, and look, hopefully he doesn't get injured because it does really change the dynamic of this Watford team, especially in the final third. But I think a lot of Watford fans would say it's probably between him and Pollock for player of the season so far. So we might as well wrap up the video now and <laughs> leave it there. Yeah, I think one thing that maybe we haven't touched upon with Georgie that we should is how bad his injuries were before he joined. I think he's had at least two ACLs, which some people don't recover from. So to be able to kind of come back from that adversity and the levels he's picking up now, like he's one of the championship's best players at the moment, most progressive carries, most shot creating actions. He's got most key passes for Watford, most progressive passes, most assists, most passes into the penalty area, most successful take-ons for Watford. He is, he is our X factor. It's interesting though, because I think there's a difference between him and Barr, and you mentioned it in terms of kind of that end product, but I think he, he, he's he been outstanding this season and he's so good to watch. So, yeah, it'd be interesting if he gets a player of the season at the end of this video. Yeah, for sure. Just on that injury record, they were all at Ghent. He missed 263 days of the knee injury in 2020-21. Uh, there was, I've, I've got to count four knee injuries he had when he was at Ghent. I mean, he's he missed almost a year and a half of, of of football and then you throw in an ankle injury a patilla injury an Achilles injury that's just the touch room of Georgie we took a gamble on him because he did have that injury record and it's a gamble that's really really paid off it's just if we can keep him fit and increase those numbers as well so Georgie goes into quality um I'll let you do a couple here Charlie do you want him any and you want to tick off quite quickly yeah, in quickly I'll I'll put bond in meh I think he's been okay, but I'm not sure if he's been good enough for decent when he's come in um, for Dan Backman. Um, I'm trying to think of any quick ones we can do. I thought uh, he filled his, his, his boots quite well, though, didn't he, Bonds? Um, when he came in, I think a lot of people were quite worried just because, and I think Bondy will know this, obviously the difference between the, the MLS and the Championship, there is there is a, diff there's a difference in intensity in terms of uh, yeah, in, in quality, quality as well. But... I think, look, we know his distribution isn't his strong point, but I think in terms of saves and actually being a calming presence, I thought he was pretty good. Well, if you want to put him in decent, I, I think he's been okay. I'm, I'm just not sure. I'm, I'm just not sure. Yeah, I'll leave that one up to you. I'm, I'm no, not too no, proud. Well, we'll back it, we'll back it. We'll yeah. Go, Charlie. Um, I'm trying to look at the list to see if there's any absolute bankers, but not really. I mean, Ogbonna hasn't played that much, but I think whenever he's played he's looked really really good um Angelo Bonner and Gak has gone in to want to see more because he hasn't played is that Jezza oh, yeah listen. Jezza he played at Millwall but he's been injured so we'll, we'll put him there <laughs> yeah I was just saying I reckon Bonner for the time he's been on the pitch he's looked really really good um I'd put him in decent um I can't wait for him to get back um to continue it in that defense and marshal it and one more I'll quickly do is Let's go, my mate, um, Fran Francesco Sierra, who I actually think has been, I'd say, decent again. Like, he hasn't really been favoured. A lot of people don't fancy him. He's been at the club quite a long time now. Um, and I think he hasn't really put a foot wrong too much with Watford. I think playing him in the centre of a back three kind of gets the best out of him. We don't want to see him in wide areas. We've seen that when we've 
reverted to a back two. Um, he's got the most blocks for Watford, most block shots as well. Um, yeah, I've enjoyed watching him when he's played for it. And whenever he's kind of playing, I don't go, oh God, it's, it's him playing. I think, I think the defenders, although our defensive record isn't great, um, I think when they've been called upon and the majority have been pretty, pretty decent. Yeah, agreed. Agreed. I think one man that I'm going to put in May, 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 <laughs> is um, <laughs> I'm going to put Ken Semmer into May. Uh, and the reason being is that there is actually a few transfer links linking him to a move to Sweden. I think it was Malmo who were linked. There was reports coming out. Um, about his about a move there. If I just double check that very very quickly, do we yeah, not want to see? Do we not want to see a bit more from him? Like he's kind of one of our kind of more senior players. I don't know if the system suits him necessarily as a left wing back, but we've seen in the championship from years gone by, um, especially that promotion one, how effective he was in that right wing. You couldn't beat him, and I think last season we were praising him a lot and. Yeah, like we all love Ken and he's been a, a brilliant ser servant for us. But on the pitch this season, I've been a bit disappointed, if, if if I'm honest. I'd kind of want to see a bit more from him. Yeah, I mean, I, I was assuming that want to see more in terms of game time. But if it's in terms of performances, probably he goes in there for me as well. I, I agree. Because I, I think I think we've seen the best of Ken Semmer in a Watfordshire. I know it's brutal, but I think that is, that's kind of the situation we found ourselves in. He's 31 years of age. He's been a great servant for Watford. I think it would be the right time to actually move him on at the end of the season. I think in terms of the character, what a guy to have around the dressing room. But in terms of what he's offering for Watford at this moment in time, he's not really got the legs now to be a, a, a dynamic wing back in the championship. The, and maybe it's because I'm comparing him to when he was under Ivic uh, and Cisco in that in that season when we got promoted. Where he was brilliant. He was arguably our player of the season. But it just it feels like his legs just are not as explosive as they used to be. And that's what we can rely on in terms of beating a man. Good player to bring on, I guess, with 20 to go, just to see it out and be a bit more balanced at times. But I want to see more from him as well. So I'm happy to drop him down. Um, but I think Watford fans are pretty unanimous in terms of his performances so far this season. I'm going to rattle a few off quite quickly. I'm going to go with... Oh, Sissoko's an interesting one. I'll leave that to, to people in just a second. I'm going to put Ebersele into decent. I think I think there's definitely potential there of Ebersele. Um and I'm gonna put Andrews into decent as well. Uh, I think I think Ebersele might have a shout to go in quality. He obviously he's played a lot, he's played a lot less minutes. He's got the second most key passes for Watford. He's won mm. the most tackles. He's got the second most successful dribbles per 90 in the championship. Um yeah, I think he's been really really good uh, last game against Oxford he obviously played on the left and looked a lot more ineffective, but yeah, I think he's been outstanding when he's been on that as that right wing back um, role. Do you agree? No, I agree. I agree. I, I didn't know if it was maybe too limited of a sample size to put him in the same bracket as mm. Pollock and Georgie, but I think in terms of the impact he's made, it's been quality without a doubt. I think you can tell for me, Ebersele is a, is a top six championship player, like without a doubt. I think there's certain players you look at in this Watford team who are definitely that. Georgie, obviously. Ebersele is another one. I think Ogbonna, when he's fit, is another one as well. Um, they're just absolutely bankers in terms of top six championship players. So I think let's go with Ebersele in quality because what he's, what he's shown so far is, of, is... And I think what's great for Ryan is that he can learn off um, Festi as well. I know they're a very similar age, but Ebersele's international experience, as Ryan has with England as well in the 20s. I've, I've put Ryan into decent as well. Um, I think he probably knows he could probably... I think there's levels for him to go up, Ryan. And maybe because he's been in and out of the team, you know, I think there was a week where he started at Sheffield Wednesday out of the squad. Swansea was on the bench and then Oxford, he was starting. So it's kind of like Cleverley's managing the squad. And I guess as a player, it's quite hard to get consistency if that's happening. But also Cleverley's managing the squad as well as he can. I think Ryan, I'll put into decent so far this season. I'm going to go with Bio into decent as well. Now, I'm not going to get too carried away with the last month. It's been an unbelievable month for him. Uh, as I said, probably the best of his career. But there is definitely a tendency that when you're talking about someone like Bio, that we could just maybe forget about the performances we were seeing before. And he was a pretty divisive figure in terms of his performances. So with that all in mind... You're talking yourself out of it. I mean, 
I think I'd probably put him in there. I know last two games, <laughs> Watford, he scored five goals, Sheffield Wednesday. But if you look at the season as the whole, um, I don't think he's been decent. Uh, I'd personally put him in there. I want to see, I want to see more from him. Um, he scored that brilliant scissor kick as well. That was his first goal of the season. Yeah, he's had. He's obviously got the mo most goals. He's got the second highest XG in the championship, so he's still underperforming. He's got six goals, but an XG of 6.6. .6. Four for the championship, big chances missed. I'd Is put it, him are in there. defining him by the goals? Pardon? Are we defining him by the goals? Because I think it's really his all-round play off the balls, I think, pretty good. But it's just his finishing. It, more of the night is poor. Not the last month, but before that. Yeah, I'd say his all round play is meh. But I'll let you have the final. We need to big up the crow as much as possible. But if I was being brutally honest, I'd say meh. <sighs> oh, this is one that I think people would either go decent or meh. Um, let's go with meh. Let's go with meh. I think I was maybe, yeah. I, look, I think it's either or, to be honest. I think they're very similar in, in that respect with bio. It's, it's, pretty, it's probably in between both, actually, the two tiers. Um, I'm going to go with I'm going to go with Tom Deli Bashiru and I'm going to go with quality for Tom Deli. And the reason I've gone quality is I think you do see the difference in midfield when he's not playing. And I think the reason we'd put him into decent is only because of his injury. When when he's played this season, I think Tom Deli Bashiru has been our best midfielder. I think also he's done the dirty work for Sissoko <laughs> as well. When Sissoko is out of position, he progresses the ball better than any other midfielder we have. I think he's like, and that's probably the most impressive thing about Watford's recent results is that we are doing it without him. And I think he's such an important part to that, to the way we play. So I think Tom Lely Bashiri goes into quality. I actually think you're being pretty generous. I was going to say decent for Tom Deli. Um, like he has been good. He has been good at times. I just, I just see him. I think we've spoken on videos before saying he's one of our most important players. And sometimes I just want him to do a bit more. I want him to be the guy who's, getting the ball, I want him to be our six, our metronome, like getting it, have a hundred touches per game, dictate and play. He's got one of the highest accurate passes. Um, I just want to see him do it at a more consistent rate. I think there has been some games kind of that, that he hasn't turned up as much, but look, I, I love him and I can't wait to see him back in. I just, I think he, I think he can, could have done better, but decent, but I'm happy. To, I'm happy to go quality if you're, if you're feeling strongly. We'll go. We'll go with decent. I was. It wasn't one that I was particularly strong, but we'll go. We'll go with. We'll go with decent for Tom Deli. I think I'm going to rattle a few of these off. Um, Jebison, I know you, you've hyped him up, Charlie. I want to see more. I, I want to see more from him. He, he's not been. He's again in and out of the team. Not easy to do. But what I've seen so far has not been great by any stretch. So I've gone. Want to see more from him. Uh, I think a lot of what fans are feeling is similar way, unless I'm unless I'm mistaken. I think Bar has to go into quality. The impact he's made in such a short period of time. Someone who was very much a peripheral figure had a couple of loans to Burton, Fortuna Dusseldorf. Cleverly, just reignited. Again, when I say reignited, he's 21, is he? Mm -hmm. So young, but just that sort of maybe slow start to his Watford career when he came in as an 18 year old and. He's just, as as Tom Ince said, sort of cleverly just released some of these younger players like Pollock, Bar's another one. So direct, so powerful, so brave on the ball. Everything you want to see from your attacker. And he's won us points, whether that's winning penalties, whether that's cutbacks in the derby game, whether that's scoring goals, even this goal, um, was it against Leeds? Yeah, bulldozed his way through. He's got through. he's got the third, I think the third highest goal creating actions in the championship per ninety. So whenever he plays, he makes an impact. He's been he's been um, astonishing this season. Just did not see it coming to him to have this impact. And if we can keep him fit for a season, he's going to be a real weapon and someone who we can really hold on to. Hopefully, as like go on to have a really good Watford career. He might he might kind of excel that and go on because he's so young. But I imagine I imagine he's not at the level yet Georgie is, and we're definitely going to have him for this season and next season. Yeah, for sure, for sure. I think Ince. I'm going to go with decent. I know you're. <laughs> 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 you love him, don't you? Me and you, me and you, had, we uh, 
Yeah. I, 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 like, I just you know what, Charlie, uh, do you know what it is, mate? I I'm a sucker for a safe pair of hands. And I think Tom Ince is a safe pair of hands. And when look, this is I, I totally believe this. He's the best set piece taker we have at the club in terms of corners, in terms of free kicks. I think when you need someone away from home, put defensively out of shape, the experience he brings, yes, he's not the sexiest of players anymore. It's not the Tom Ince when he was at Blackpool or even Derby. And I know he wasn't with Watford fans, were a massive fan of him when he, when he was there. But what I will say is you're guaranteed, I think, more often than not, a six out of seven or six, uh, six out of seven, six or seven out of ten with Tom Ince if you play him. And that, for me, is def that defines decent. Nothing more, nothing less. Decent. Mm. I just want to see more on the ball from him. Like, he has got quality. We've seen that at the Etihad. He scored that great goal. And I know he's come in and when we played kind of free midfield and he's played centrally and, he, yeah, he, he's looked OK out of possession. But I just want to see a bit more in possession. I think there's been a few games. I think he started against... Um, what was the recent game at home, Blackburn, and he got taken off and he just didn't really do anything. So I would have said meh, but I've had quite a few. So no, no, no. I, I, I enjoy this. I think it's I think it's good. I think I think it's good that we 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 change it. But look, I, what I would say is between decent and meh, that's up for debate, isn't it? I think like quality to decent is a big gap. A, or bigger gap, probably is a better way to say. But decent and meh is a bit different. I'd go decent, Charlie's gone meh on that. With Larusi, I'm going to go with. Oh, that's a tough one. I, I'm not putting him in decent, Larusi. It's either <laughs> meh or want to see more for Larusi for me. I, I'm saying, I'm saying meh. I think going forward, he's been pretty solid. I think he's had one of the most highest shots out of any defenders in the championship. Um, it's going the other way though, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, I think only Joe Ranking Costello has got more shots per 90 than Larusi out of any defenders. I think Ryan's third on that list. So it kind of shows what Tom, how he wants his, his wing backs. He played against Stoke and he was really good and away against Leeds, but defensively he just he, he does not look um he does not look safe at all. I think Mayor Mayor's fair for him. L loser, do we put him in Mayor or want to see more? I want to see more from Loser. Like he played well against Oxford. Uh, I don't know if it's cynical to say on TV at home, um, and we got a glimpse of it. But back it back it up, back it up with another performance when you come on. I just for for his ability, he should be one of our most important players. And for one reason or other, obviously he had that bad injury, but he's not managed to kind of kick on. And he should be he should be walking the championship. So I want to see more from Loser. I think I'm going to leave Sissoko to the end because he's quite... I think that one could split opinion with, with Sissoko. Kiembe, I'm going to go with decent. Um, again, another one where I think people are kind of torn on his role. Um, there's a lot of like narratives and debates with Watford players this season. Uh, maybe I feel like every season that's the case. Whether he's a right forward, whether he's a central midfielder, can you play him in a midfield too? But Kiembe ultimately has had some really big moments early on this season and won us points and scored quite a few goals and has a lovely strike on him. And I think when you take that into account, and he has played a couple of different roles, he's had some big moments already and I think he goes into decent. Portius as well, I'd put in decent, Charlie. Really? Really? Oh, I, re, re, really? I, I, I really like Porto, but... To say decent might be strong. I would have probably sided with Mayor. I think re in the last couple of games he's really improved, and we've seen like a lot better levels of performance. Um, I still think he's. I think at the start of the season, yeah, he's given us some kind of scary moments, and I know he's got like the most yellow cards out of what for players, and um, he's lost a few jewels. But I, I would say Mayor. I think he just needs that consistency. I think last couple of games he's really improved. Like I don't mind him being that right-sided player. Um, I just think he, he needs to be a bit more consistent to move up to decent. I'm going to put Sissoko in there as well. Oh, Yeah, and it's brutal, but I'm not totally sold on Sissoko. I think as, a, as a, someone who's experienced in dressing room, especially the younger players, brilliant. I'm, I'm not denying that. I think in a midfield too, give it another 10 games. I think already you're seeing him a bit being leggy because he's playing too much football, I think. And this is not, I'm not blaming Cleverly here at all because I don't think he's, he's not had a lot of options because of injuries and 
sort of players, young players coming in. Dwomo's just started to get involved with the team and Kiembe's had to drop back in. Deli bashiru has been out. So we've had to change it a little bit. But I, I, I think when he signs, the one thing I said about Sissoko is on paper, a great signing if it's just going to be a sort of rotational option. So you're bringing him in on a Tuesday, bench on a Saturday. But he is playing more games, more often than not he's playing and starting for Watford. And I think with his age being 35, with him being, you could tell in some games he looks a bit leggy. I don't know if I could put him into decent because I do feel like the part, the midfield partner next to him does a lot of the heavy lifting in terms of his positioning. I feel like he is out of position quite a bit and it does rely on, that's why I think Deli Bashir has been quality because you think of what he's had to do as well. Like I think Sissoko provides quality, quality, especially when you have those physic, those sort of physical games. You know what he's great at. His attributes physically are brilliant, but I think maybe in terms of positionally, yeah, I do struggle with him at times, Charlie. Yeah, I think at the start of the season, I would have said definitely decent. Um, and then I think I said to you guys, it'd be interesting when he got suspended, how much we'll miss him. I thought we might miss him and I don't think we have missed him as much as I, as I thought. So, yeah, we'll let you have Mayor, but I do think he, um, <laughs> I do think he's added something to this team. And what I said about kind of that physicality, I do enjoy at times when he looks like he's um, the big kid in the playground when he just moves players off the ball right. to, re to regain possession. And sometimes when he goes travelling, but yeah, I don't think he's kept up the level of the performance. I thought the start of the season was decent, but yeah, I think Mayor is fair. And I don't right. know if we can expect him to at this point in his career. Like, let's be honest, like the championship is, a, is such a demanding league. And this guy, you know, he's not in his prime, Sissoko. He's had a great career, but he's not in his prime. Similar with Ogbonna. Ogbonna couldn't play every single game because of what, you know, he's 36. So I think he's just, I think he's probably come at his detriment the amount, the amount of football he's played for Watford. The biggest question though, Charlie, player of the season so far, Pollock, Shaq Fadatsi, not Ebersele because it's too, too early on, I think. Or Bar, so Pollock, Chaffordatsi, or Quadro Bar. Yeah, I didn't know if oh, we should have done like a tier for like young player, and I think Quadro Bar at the moment he's got that, and it's his to lose. Um, for me, it's Matty Pollock. Um, just when I look at his development this season and the levels he's reached, I think he's performing as one of the best players in the championship. Um, he's won the most aerial duels in the championship. Obviously, he's played the most minutes. Watford show being a real leader. Interesting stat, most passes into the final third for Watford. So we've actually seen how good he's been on the ball as well. We've seen that assist he had for Bio, that lovely uh, pitched um, chip. Most interceptions, most clearances. Uh, I think he's been exceptional. He's my player of season. If Georgie was scoring the goals, then it could have been Georgie. But I think Pollock, for what he's been asked to do, being that defender, I think he has been the outstanding player for Watford this season. Yeah, agreed. I, I, to be honest, I think... 50% of people will say Pollock, 50% of people probably play, say chat for that see, for different reasons. I think, well, I'd be interested to come the end of the season, who can maintain that level of performance. I think I'm going to give it to Pollock as well. Uh, very, I'm not going to repeat what Charlie said, but pretty much the same in terms of his arc at Watford. The fact that to think eight months ago, nine months ago, he was close to leaving Watford, which is crazy. Um, but chat for that is our best player. Technically, without a doubt, our best player. But I think in terms of the importance to the team, and when you think of probably now, I'd go as far as say, Charlie, him and Georgie are the two first names on the team sheet every week. So that almost shows the importance. And they've been rewarded with new contracts. Chat for that's for different reasons. Pollock's very much, I think, to, to be here for a long, long stint. And do you see him as the next captain, Matty? Yeah, give him the armband. Like, I know Tom said he likes a... Uh likes an on-pitch captain and but yeah I think he's been I think Dan's club captain but I think Matty Pollock's got everything you want in a leader kind of showing on the pitch uh, setting the tone his application and now the consistency of performances so yeah hopefully we can have a real kind of Jay Demerit um, vibe he gives me that Jay Demerit vibe the way he plays and he, he, he became our captain so hopefully he can have a long career at Watford and He's such a good lad. Um, we've seen him talking to the fans and what ever since he's walked into the club, he said how important it is to play for Watford. So, yeah, I love having him and I'm so happy he's kicked on this season. I'll tell you what, maybe he's giving Steve Terry as well. I reckon some of the uh, 
the older Watford fans with the, with the head bandage. Uh, yeah, no, it's, it's a Jay Demerit, Steve Terry vibe, I reckon, with, with Matty. He's our player of the season so far. Let us know your player of the season so far in the comment section below. And also, any of our takes, agree, disagree? Have we had an absolute shocker with this? Let us know in the comment section below. Charlie, what a pleasure. Thanks so much to everyone who watched today. Please do leave a like on the way out. Subscribe to WD18. Comment down below your thoughts, as I said. Drop us a five-star review. We'll be back, Charlie, potentially on Friday night, potentially on Sunday, depending probably on the result. Um, mm -hmm. Anything else I've missed, as always, brought to you in partnership with Half Your Minds. Any extra final words, Charlie, for Friday? No. Let's, uh, let's smash this green army. Um... And uh, yeah, get a win on Friday. You might see us Friday night. If not, we'll be normal slot on Sunday. And then a busy week and a busy festive period uh, supporting Watford. So um, strap yourself in. Top man. What a pleasure, guys. Take care of yourselves and we will see you in the next one. Up the audience. You want.